We for, are we good? Are we are we hot? You can hear. Um, we live. Sangeeta, Jamie, and Herman can hear us, but no, nobody else can. Right? Okay. We're not broadcasting. Okay. <clears throat> are we waiting on anything else? Or are we ready to go? Or is it just? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we need to wait another couple minutes to make sure it's here. They're not waiting on us, are they? No, but that's are we ready to go? You can go there. Okay. Good morning, and uh, this is January 28th. The meeting of the Texas State Board of Examiners of Psychologists will come to order. We'll begin with the roll. Mr. Adler? He waved. Can we hear yes, you? I'm here. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Very good. Mr. Bridges? Here. Dr. Becker? Here. Dr. Calhoun? Dr. Cartwright? Here. Dr. Landon? Present. Dr. Singh? Present. Mr. Zagurus? Here. Thank you guys very much. We are going to take things a little bit out of order. We're going to start with public comment. Do we have any public comment registered? Anybody wishing to speak? No. Okay. Very good. Okay, so the first order of business will be selection of TSVEP council members uh, for the unexpired term of our professional member, uh, which will go through next year, and public member. The uh, floor is open for nominations or discussion. I nominate Mr. John John Belamowitz to continue as a uh, public member. Thank you. It's good move for John Belamowitz to continue as public member. I second. Thank you, Dr. Singh. It's been seconded. Is there any further discussion? <clears throat> all right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Um, Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, next, for unexpired term of professional member, and this will go through next year. <clears throat> I nominate Dr. Mark Hartwright. It's been nominated. You're second. I, I second Dr. Cartwright's nomination. It's been moved and seconded for uh, for Dr. Cartwright. 
All those in favor, is there any discussion? All those uh, in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And the ayes have it. I forgot to get it myself. So thank you, uh, thank you, Dr. Cartwright, thank for <coughs> for that. Uh, and congratulations. So we're uh, moving right along. So we're now going to get into the proposed rule 46311. Um, there's been a lot of discussion on this. Uh, one thing that uh, many deliberative bodies, uh, and most notably uh, the Supreme Court, uh, goes by the general rule of everybody speaks once before somebody speaks twice. So I'd really like to make sure that everybody gets a chance to speak on this uh, if you have something to say. Uh, before we uh, continue on this. So uh, obviously everybody's aware we voted on this at the last meeting and it's been asked, uh, we've been asked to look at it again by two members of the legislature. Um, so the floor is open to discuss 463.11, what we should do with this. Uh, what, what I'd like to uh, clarify, which I'm confused on, and I apologize for that, it, it seems like this has gotten into changing the rule. And I'm not so sure that we're changing the rule. We're not, we're not saying that, that uh, we're eliminating the two psychologists, because that's the, that's the issue here. The lady had, Dr. Stanley had only one psychologist supervising her. And so if we were to make a, I don't know what you call it, a, uh, give her a break or, uh, 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 Daryl, help me out. What, what am I looking for? What's the word I'm looking for here in terms of negotiate a, an agreement with this? Uh, Curing a deficiency. Okay. And what so then by, by creating a path for this lady to, to get rid of that deficiency, that is not changing the rule. Everybody else that could, goes to a postdoc internship is still going to have to have two psychologists. So I don't know where the heck uh, all, a lot of these public comments um, they were all about changing the rule. And I'm not so sure that I'm going to vote for changing the rule. I'm going to vote for giving this deserved lady her license. Can I, can I speak? Absolutely. Thank so you. <clears throat> I'm going to not talk about directly about Dr. Stanley, but about the general broad issue at hand is that our rules no, are not perfect. Our rules, you know, don't have to stay the same. Things change over time, conditions change over time, the times change. And that always calls for any kind of any kind of rulemaking body, you know, to re-examine their rules to see because our rules have weaknesses. Our weaknesses. Whether we want to admit it or not, they're they they have some serious weaknesses, and this is one of them. And we want to be able to say to people that we look at things as the times change. We look at things as needed, not because it's the way it's always been, because frankly, that kind of uh, logic, I don't think wins the day ever, in my opinion. So it comes to a, comes to a point where, I'm not talking about anybody specific, but realizing what we're at, realizing what the issue is, the weakness of the rules, whether we're afraid of putting some incompetent psychologists out there, which I think is not reality-based, whether we're afraid of our own future judgments about picking which rules we want to look, we look at and what exceptions we're willing to make. We can't worry about that right now. We trust ourselves. We are, we are the body that makes these laws. It, those will be in our hands also. So you have to be willing to look to the future and willing to say sometimes things need to be flexed a little bit without the fear of the worst case scenario because that's what the best is for, for the profession and for the state and for the people in the state needing our services. Whether we think something horribly will go wrong by doing this or with the, the professional psychology will be diluted, I categorically disagree with that because there's no evidence to say that there's no logic based on that. So it comes to a point where are we gonna be like every other rural body in the country to re-examine our rules, to make a slight change based on the needs of the times, but we're gonna stick the same with rules that were made decades ago. Thank you, Mr. Adler. 
Uh, and also, Dr. Calhoun is, is now present, just to note that for the record. <coughs> Um, I, I appreciate that sentiment, Dr. Adler, and I agree with the majority of what you said. Um, and I do think that we need to address the changing times. And to your point, I think that rules do need to change and that we do need to be flexible in our thinking. Um, I think inherently the challenges of what was presented in 46311 that I think there were aspects of it that were taken out of context in the public arguments on all sides of things that were just a misunderstanding of what the attempt was with this legislation, which was a means for remediation for candidates that come before the board who check the majority of the boxes, if not all of the boxes, but that there is some minor deficiency that we would like as a board to say, here's how we get you to the minimum standards that make us comfortable with saying, you are not going to <coughs> the public and you are not going to harm people in what you are doing. And that is ultimately, I think, what we're all trying to agree to get to. And I think the concern was that there was a lot of concern about word waiver in, in particular, that there could be advantage taken by that word out of context that could then make vulnerable parts of our standards as psychologists that could potentially <coughs> take an advantage of in those sort of unintentional consequences. And that's what folks were responding to. So I don't want to get too far into this without saying that um, I'm not going to speak for other members of the board, but I will say that myself, Dr. Cartwright, and Dr. Lambden spent several weeks the past few weeks during our holidays trying to hash through different iterations of this language to see if we could address the concerns that our psychologist constituents brought um, that were meaningful and had relevance and were legitimate concerns about public practice and standards of practice and psychology um, and fundamental, you know, public safety concerns that they had. And also hear the concerns of our legislature about being flexible and restricting practice and making sure that we were allowing people who were qualified to remediate to be able to practice in our state. And we think that the fulcrum of this concern is around the word waiver. And if we were to make an amendment to this bill as it currently is, and we took out the word waiver, and we changed it to remediate, that we might have a different bill here. And so that's actually what I would like to propose. And I'm, I'm going to mess up the procedure here in saying this. Um, but there are several places in here that if we change the word <coughs> waiver and modify to remediate a deficiency, I think that we have changed the spirit of this legislature in a way that is much more palatable to the folks that have had significant issues. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Becker. Um, we can work on a motion if you want to if you want to modify something, we can work on that. Um, we, can, we can work on that. Just need to know where and how exactly, based on um, a variation. Um, it'd probably be easiest to start with a variation of what's on the agenda um, to figure out which what would need to be modified. And we may, um, depending on that, may stand at ease for a minute to figure that out. Um, we can work through that. Anybody else wishing to speak? Um, Doctor, it sounds like nobody else has a whole lot to share on it. Dr. Becker, do you have um, spe a specific motion in terms of del deletion or addition of words in certain places that you'd like to put up? I do. Um, do I do this, John? Do I just say I have a, I have a motion to amend? Yes. 
11, <clears throat> one, two, G1 well, and two, pretty much. One and two, you said? <laughs> well, uh, the other thing we're also going to need, part of that motion would probably be good to, can our attorneys help me out here? What do we need to say to revisit our previous re recommendation to take that down and to to repropose something at, as is probably about to be amended here? You would simply need, in your motion, you would simply need to state that um, we move to revisit the previous recommendation and substitute that recommendation with the following uh, changes. Okay. Jamie, does that sound like, a mo like the motion you're trying to make here? Yes, so I want to resubstitute the motion. I'm sorry, say that again, Daryl, what am I saying? You're, you're, you need to move to uh, revisit the prior recommendation to BHAG and substitute that recommendation with the following changes. Dr. Becker, you oh, could I say so to. moved and then with your amendment. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> <laughs> and then now let's talk about the additions and deletions that you'd like to like to see there. <clears throat> So in, um, we're talking about rule G under remedy for incomplete supervised experience. So this is what we had originally added to 463.11 that folks really struggled with. Um, so down there towards the bottom where it says may petition for a waiver or modification of the areas, if we strike that language, a waiver or modification, of areas and we supplement that with permission to remediate an area. Give me just a okay. second here and I'm going to pull that up so I can I was say Mr. Chair would Dr. Becker would it be helpful if we shared on the screen so everybody can see it the document that you sent me I think this morning. Yes. Okay because Patrick's got that operative language pulled out so let's do that stand by for just a second. Dr. Becker, can you see this on your screen? Yes, this is exactly what I, I sent this morning. Okay. I'm just having this written because it's much easier to see than talk about. I'm a can we zoom person. in on that? I'm having a hard time reading that <coughs> in the room. Thank you. So if we strike that language, a waiver or modification, and we supplement that with permission to remediate an area, and really what we have done in each of those subsequent sections is take that wave and modify language out. Yeah. Make it a remediation language, which was what we had always intended. Right. Um, and then we put that on the applicant to demonstrate that. And we are then talking about moving that up to what we expect um, to meet those minimum qualifications and we're not talking about waiving or getting rid of any requirements. We are talking about giving the board the permission to then have applicants come to the board and seek out ways of remediating minor application challenges to Dr. to Mr. Adler's point. Um, and you have a reasonable request, we can say, Let's talk about how we can remediate this. That's the flexibility that we were always looking for. We're not saying throw these things out. We're not saying, you know, let's go after the internship. We're not looking for loopholes. We're saying if it's a reasonable request, let's talk about how to build in the flexibility to say we can remediate. Can we scroll down? Is there any, there, is there the only changes? Is there more? There we go. <coughs> Landon and I really wanted to put in this call out about public welfare um, because we thought it was important. This was something that we had pulled from the language um, that exists in the Minnesota waiver um, statute that we thought was really important. 
um, because that was a concern that had come up repeatedly that this be about public welfare and we wanted to make that a call out in the language that we were putting in. That's the only language changes that we were suggesting for those things. Perfect. Okay, so the motion before the body right now is to essentially revisit the recommendation that we made at the last meeting, <coughs> take that language as amended here by, by, uh, by Dr. Becker. Um, is, there a, is there further discussion on this? Actually, I'm sorry, is there a second, first of all? I second. I second. All right, it's been seconded. I second. I second. Is there any? Okay, so <laughs> what we're voting on right now <laughs> will be a for, sounds like a formality. <laughs> Uh, what we're voting on right now is to amend it, and this is not necessarily for, um, take that back. The motion is to, no, the motion is to, to revisit our, our last uh, recommendation. It's, it's being, uh, it's not even being amended, it's being proposed exactly like this, and so this would be the vote to actually take it down and to uh, pass it as, as you guys see it before you. So is there any further discussion? For adoption of the council. Yeah, for adoption of the council. Yeah. Any further discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor say well, well, I just want to say I would appreciate the work of Dr. Becker, Dr. Cartwright, and Dr. Lambden. I think this is a reasonable um, 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 reasonable compromise. Um, and I think it captures the spirit of what we're trying to say. So thank you, everybody. Um, I'll go. I'll take that a step further. I think I think it demonstrates a refining uh, and improvement. Um, I think it's far more clear the intention of what what we're trying to do here in the first place. So I, I think it, I think it's improved for sure. Um, is there any further discussion? All right. Put the question to you. All those in favor of of revisiting our recommendation and replacing it with this, as put forth by Dr. Becker, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. The ayes have it. Thank you very much for everybody's very hard work on that. Um, this board dug deep, and I just appreciate everybody's work and willingness to work on that. So, well done. Um, moving on. I'm going to go ahead and just j jump into the chair's report. I'm just going to go ahead and, and announce uh, committee assignments. Um, and after that, the, we're, our, the desk is clear after that, correct? No, the desk. Okay. Um, rules committee is going to be Valamowitz, Becker, Adler. Compliance is going to be Mr. Zagurus and Dr. Lambden. Jurisprudence, Dr. Singh. Application, I'm sorry, um, and jurisprudence will be Dr. Singh and Mr. Bridges. Applications will be Dr. Calhoun and Mr. Bridges, um, and that is that is that is it for the agenda today. Does anybody have any um, announcements or things that you'd like to see on the well, One concern, one yes, concern, sir. John. Shouldn't the applications committee have at least one licensee on it <laughs> to understand what you know? I, I totally uh, have faith in the, Mr. Bridges and Dr. Calhoun's, but I you know right now I'm the only I'm the only member of the applications committee. And, okay. I'm, and I'm having and I'm having to make decisions here that a little bit hard for me because it's about psych, you know psychologist applications. So I would think it'd be difficult for them, for them without at least one licensee to help. You know, I I appreciate you speaking up on that. Um, may I add you to it? You may. Sure. I'm already on it. Sure. Okay. <laughs> thank you for um, thank you for speaking up on that. Um, I appreciate that very much. Um, Anything else for uh, next agenda that we need to discuss or put on the? All right, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, so public. Oh. Oh, we already took, we already took public. And, yeah, that was the first thing that we did. So, good. All right, that objection. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>